Hi there, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the Alpine email client on uh, the command line in Linux to access your normal IMAP email service. Now I'm using the Apple iCloud mail service but you can use other mail services as long as you've switched the IMAP setting on uh, such as Gmail and uh, many other uh, email services that support the standard IMAP service. So to do this, we're using the Alpine um, email program. Alpine is um, a new version of the, um, the Pine email client, uh, which has been known for many years. So to first of all, to install it, you just do uh, get install Alpine. And this is uh, on a standard Ubuntu box. Perfect, it's downloaded, and then we'll run it up, okay? So to run it up, first thing you'll see when you type in Alpine at the command line, you see a welcome message. To exit the greeting, press the E key. And then it'll, it might, at this point, moan about the incomplete mail, mail domain. This particular machine is called HP8000, um, which is not a valid domain name, so uh, it's giving us a problem there, which is fine. Okay. Now, if we go into the setup menu, which you can access by either hitting the S key or uh, just using the, the cursor keys and moving down uh, and hitting return on this option, setup, you'll see there's a number of items here, um, exit, printer and so forth. Uh, the option that we're looking for is collection lists. Now, if you're using a, a normal email client such as Thunderbird or something like that, this would be called accounts. This is where we create the accounts for the uh, the mail client. So we'll just help hit on the L key here and you can see that there's uh, one local mail folder already set up. So the local mail folder is where all your local email on your machine is kept but really that's of no use to us for this particular exercise since all the mail is remote. It's on the uh, iMail iCloud server. Okay so to add in the, um, the iCloud mail server the way we do that is simply by clicking on the A button. So once we click on there, you can choose any nickname you like, but I'll choose iCloud because it's the iCloud mail server we're using. Um, and the server, this is important that you get this one right. Uh, for the iCloud mail service, the server is imap.mail.me.com forward slash SSL forward slash user equals, and then you put in your username. Now your username is the first part of your email address before the at sign. So if your email address is bob at icloud.com, then you would just simply put in bob here. So my address is there, okay. And then I've just pressed the down arrow and it's now spoken to the server and said, what's your password? So I'll pop in my password, fantastic. I'll leave the path empty, uh, but I would like to put the asterisk beside the view option, and that just allows us to see all of the IMAP folders if you have multiple folders in the, uh, in the, in the server. Okay, so once you've done that, that's all you need to do for that particular screen. Press the Control and X key, so that's this option here, Control X, and that will save that configuration. Control X, exit and save changes, press Y. Okay, now you can see that we've got two folders here. One is the mail on the local machine, as we talked about earlier, and now the iCloud one. So let's delete the local folders because we have absolutely no use for them. And to do that, we just use the D key to delete a collection. So press D on that, delete the collection definition for mail. Yes, okay, now we only have iCloud, perfect. We're not yet ready to uh, go. We need to set up SMTP and a few other options. So first of all, Let's go back out and press exit setup. So that's the E key, but we want to go straight back into setup. So we do that, uh, but instead of going to the collection lists, press the C key for config, which is this option here. Okay, now here's a few options. The first option that you should choose is to uh, set the user domain. In this case, the user domain is icloud.com. And the SMTP server is very important because this allows you to be able to send email. So it's quite a long address um, and it does include your username again. So the address is smtp.mail.me.com 
and then this is an important bit about uh, the SSL certificate, no validate dash cert slash user equals, and then again that first part of your email address, colon 587, which is the port for SMTPS, forward slash TLS. So smtp.mail.me.com forward slash no validate dash cert slash user equals, then your username colon 587 forward slash TLS. Enter that. We'll leave NMTP unless you use uh, Usenet. Your inbox path uh, locates uh, where your uh, inbox folder is. And um, at the moment, this is pointing to a local folder, which we don't want to do. We want to set the uh, remote inbox folder. So to do that, again, we do curly brace imap.mail.me.com, then forward slash no validate dash cert forward slash then your username colon 993 which is the imap4 SSL implementation then forward slash SSL close curly brace and then lowercase inbox and that will set the inbox uh, as that particular remote server uh, folder. So you, you should see that now there. Um, I don't think the next few server session settings are important, uh, but the uh, sent folder is. So you want to have all your mail that when you send it, go into the appropriate sent mail folder on the server. Um, again, it's using a local, ser uh, local file here rather than the remote server. So let's just get rid of the default value and enter again, open curly brace, imap.mail.me.com forward slash no validate dash cert forward slash user equals your username colon 993 forward slash SSL, close curly brace, and then sent, note how it has a capital S. Um, Apple's default sent folder is with a capital S. Okay, so you enter that in, and also you might want to use the trash set setting as well, so that all your trashed uh, emails go on the server rather than on your local machine. Again, you just do that by entering uh, the same as the above line with uh, sent, but with the words trash with a capital T. Okay, you can set many other uh, aspects along here, but the main aspect that you have to set up is your domain options. So scroll right down to pretty near the bottom of the settings here, and you'll see an option called customized headers. So that's way down here. Just using the down arrow cursor key here to get down past all of these settings. As you can see, it's fairly extensive about what you can customize with this application, so it's pretty, pretty helpful. Okay, and you can see now here, customized headers. And if you choose the option, if you actually enter in from with a capital F, then a space, and then your name, and then less than caret, and then your full email address. And that way that whatever your local machine is set up with as a domain name, this will override that setting to be your correct email address. Um, but you have to make sure that that capital F is in place, the colon is in place, the space after the colon is in place, your name is there but separated uh, by a space at the end of it, and then has the local, uh, sorry, the um, lower, the less than and the greater than signs to denote your email address. So it has to be in that particular format there. Okay, so once you've done that, um, then you're free to have a look at many other settings that you can you can uh, you can look at. I particularly use uh, an alternate um, a comp composition program. I use Vi instead of the inbuilt uh, Pico editor. You can do that. Um, you can also specify a web browser for viewing links with, um, and I use the eLinks web browser. You can change many different things like that. You can use a, a spell check, for example, as well. Okay, so once you've gone through all those settings and you're happy with all of the settings, press the E key for Exit Setup and commit those changes, press yes. Now, you could just go straight into your email at this point in time, but what I like to do is I press uh, Q and quit Alpine, and the reason for this 
is because I want to be able to save my passwords so I don't have to keep entering them every single time. And how do you do this? Well, you create a password save file. So to do that, simply type in touch dot pine da oops pine dash pass file and that tells alpine that it has got a it's got a uh, save passwords into that particular file now the file uh, does contain encrypted passwords but obviously um, they're not strongly encrypted so just uh, be aware of that so um, yep so when you start up the um, the pine program now the alpine program uh, it will try and open up the inbox. Let's, uh, yeah, let's have a look, see and see if this works. See if I can type in my password, right? Preserve password on disk for next login. It's asking me that because we just created that pine pass file uh, thing. Yes, I'll say why. And it says folder inbox has been opened with six messages. Um, to view them, you can just go to message index and you can see all of your um, mail in, in your inbox there. And um, you can compose, you can have a look there by pressing the less than key, you can go back and view all of the particular folders in that, uh, in that mail server. Or you can go back to the main menu and uh, you can compose a message from there or within the, the message index list. So compose a message to, uh, I'll just send it to myself, And so once you've typed in your message that you want to send, you press Control and X, as it says um, down here. And it says, send message, yes. Sending mail, and hopefully if I've got the SMTP settings right, it should ask me for the password, which it has. That's fantastic. Um, I'll just pop in my password now. Preserve that password, yes. Thank you very much. And it's done and I should have the new message in my inbox. So I've got a message in index. Yep, there it is. This is a test. So you can see that my mail is working and set up. And you can, uh, you can use that for pretty much all mail. It works pretty well. So hopefully now you can, uh, you can use uh, the command line email for a lot of your basic email requirements without having to uh, swap over to um, a graphical machine if you're out and about. Hope this has helped. Keep on checking out our website, www.linuxnewbieguide.org. That's www.linuxnewbieguide.org for more of these great hints and tips and tutorials, as well as choosing, using, and installing Linux on any computer. Thanks for watching.